In a world where structures defy the ravages of time, treated lumber emerges as a testament to human ingenuity and the enduring power of nature. Its story weaves through history, intertwining with cultures and civilizations, leaving an indelible mark on the architectural landscape. Come with me. Let's embark on a journey through the ages, where the fortitude of treated lumber, fortified with chromated arsenicals, including chromium, copper, and arsenic, has reigned supreme. From the dawn of the 1930s, the secrets of pressure-treated lumber began to unfold. Wood preservatives infused with these powerful chemicals unleashed a formidable defense against the relentless forces of decay. Insects, rot, and even wood-boring marine organisms trembled in the face of this treated guardian. But it is in the hands of craftsmen and visionaries that the true marvel of treated lumber comes to life. From towering structures to humble garden beds, pressure-treated lumber has found its place in countless projects. Imagine the majestic boardwalks that wind through the scenic coastal landscapes, beckoning visitors to embrace nature's beauty. Or picture Historic bridges that stand strong, connecting communities and preserving the tales of bygone eras. Treated lumber has left its indelible mark on these remarkable achievements, a testament to its practicality, cost, and durability. Handling this remarkable material demands caution, though. A delicate dance with safety, some would say. Like a knight donning armor, gloves, eye shields. Even dust masks transform workers into sentinels, preserving both the wood and the warriors themselves. Diving deeper into the enchanting process that bestows its transformative qualities upon the lumber. Imagine the timbers are loaded onto a retort, a steel cylinder resembling a proud rail car, venturing off into the realm of metamorphosis. In this chamber, a symphony begins, orchestrated by buttons and knobs, gauges, and the watchful eyes of everyone who's working there, the observers. The whisper of a vacuum draws out all the air. It leaves behind an empty canvas, wood, ready for its magical infusion. Under a weight of 160 pounds, the treatment surges, penetrating the very essence of the lumber. Its cells become fortresses, impervious to the relentless march of time. As the finale unfolds, the treatment gracefully retreats, leaving the wood forever transformed. Yet, interestingly, the transformation does not reach the core. And that reveals an eternal mystery. See, Upon a drip pad, the lumber find its final purpose. With its grace, it rests, allowing the treatment to embrace each cell of the wood, forging an unbreakable bond. The stage is finally set. A performance of curing and drying commences. Under the summer sun, 48 hours holds hands with the wood, though sometimes nature extends the spectacle, stretching it into weeks. Patiently, the lumber awaits his grand unveiling. While chromated copper arsenic adorned many pages of its saga, a new era beckons a symphony of sustainability. In 2002, responding to the call of environmental concerns, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, rallied the industry. A voluntary decision emerged, leading to the rise of eco-friendly alternatives, Micronized copper azole, alkaline copper quaternary, copper azole, and other formulations emerged as champions as well, shielding against rot, insects, and decay. From picturesque landscapes to winding pathways, treated lumber will now prove its mettle in severe weather applications, but without using arsenic. One must keep in mind, treated wood could leach harmful compounds for many, many years. So it's prudent to assume that the wood remains toxic. To avoid exposure, precautions need to be taken when handling pressure-treated wood, such as refraining from burning it or inhaling sawdust during the cutting. Surprisingly, depending on the application, 
Pressure treated wood contains between 0.40 and 0.60 pounds of chemicals per cubic foot. That's a lot. Think about that. Look that up. While pressure treating makes wood water resistant, it does not provide complete resistance to rot, though. Water can still penetrate when the wood moves, when it bends or fractures. However, the primary goal is to minimize water exposure. That right there preserves the structural integrity of the wood. Staining pressure treated wood should only be done after complete drying. Very important to remember that. In regions without constant rainfall, this drying process could take up to six months. As the wood dries, the chemicals gradually degrade, allowing better adherence to the stain and ensuring a more appealing appearance. To determine if pressure-treated wood is ready for staining, you can very simply perform a water test. If water continues to beat up on the surface, well, then you need more drying time. Additionally, pressure-treated wood, it can be painted. A lot of people say it can't. They're wrong. But it is crucial to prime the wood before applying paint to achieve optimal results. That's going to help ensure a long-lasting and vibrant finish. Explore the rich tapestry of treated lumber's impact as it weaves through cultures and time, leaving an indelible mark on the built environment. From grand architectural wonders to small-scale projects, treated lumber has proven its worth across the ages. Its versatility and durability have left that indelible mark on the entire built environment, connecting communities, preserving the stories of our past, and as advancements continue and sustainable practices take center stage, treated lumber evolves, offering even greater possibilities for the future. Take a look at nanotechnology. There's so much more to come. These are interesting things with JC.